up, yens guys? Welcome back to Fishing PA with Ryan Reed. In this episode, we're going to continue on with my lake breakdown series, and we're going to break down Keystone Lake and Keystone State Park. Now, Keystone Lake is about a 78-acre impoundment in Westmoreland County. The main species of fish in this lake is really going to start with trout. This lake is heavily stocked with trout, especially early in the season. However, this is a big bass lake, so largemouth bass is going to be a really good option for Keystone Lake. Now you're also going to find crappie, black crappie in particular, you're going to find bluegill perch and catfish. But the reason I'm here today is for my targeted species of tiger muskie. So tiger muskie are really prevalent in Keystone Lake as of a few years ago. My plan for this episode is to really focus on breaking down key elements of the lake. We're going to talk about hot spots of the lake and we're also going to get into the map and I'm going to show you guys my markup for Keystone. So hopefully this information is beneficial for you guys. It's mid-November currently. It's a little bit cold out here. So hopefully you guys can use this information when you get into spring and summer of next year. All right guys, let's go ahead and dive in. One really important thing that you guys need to know that when you're fishing state parks in the state of Pennsylvania, like Keystone, fishing from the beaches, fishing from the docks, and fishing from the mooring areas is actually illegal. You can't do that. So make sure before you guys head out to a body of water like this, make sure you guys check the Fish and Boat website and read up on the regulations for each lake so you don't get yourself in trouble. All right, boys and girls, let's go ahead and get started here on the map. So I got my map here in front of me. I'm going to go ahead and pan in to Keystone State Park. And again, as a reminder, this lake is about 78 acres. So it's a relatively small body of water. However, the Boat and Fish Commission, being that this is man-made, they've dropped a lot of good structure in here for the fish improvement plan. So we're going to see a lot of porcupine cribs. We're going to see spider humps and we're gonna see down trees. That's gonna be the primary structure points in Keystone Lake. So we're gonna start on the east end of the lake. And now the east end of the lake is probably the most shallow end because it's the opposite end of the dam. So I wanna start with the causeway. We have this road here. Now this causeway, there's a sign on there that says no fishing. So on the bottom, right outside the causeway, you have a parking area here. This is a great spot for you to park and get access to areas around the causeway. Now to the right of the causeway, you have shallow water. That water is gonna be anywhere from a foot to three feet deep. It's not very deep in there and it's not gonna hold a lot of the bigger fish. However, you might find a stray tiger muskie or you might find a stray largemouth in there and there's gonna be a lot of good panfish in there too just because the water is shallow and there's very, very good weed vegetation. So we have this shallow end here, we have the parking here, and we have no fishing on the causeway. Above the causeway, there's another parking lot. So on the other side of the road, you have a parking lot, and then you also have the beach area. It's also worth noting that you can't fish at the beach. That's primarily for swimming. So you're going to have to stay outside of that area in the causeway when you're out there fishing. So let's work the structure from the east to west. So we're gonna start again on the east side and we're gonna work west. So first and foremost, this little cove right here, this is kind of a neat little area to fish. The reason for that, when you get a west wind or you get a wind that's pushing to this end of the lake, all the bait fish are actually gonna get pushed and stacked up outside of this cove. Now you have good rock piles here. And right outside of this area, you have porcupine cribs that were dropped in there. Now, if you work along the shoreline, you have downed trees and you got about five feet of water, you know, out towards the middle of the lake here. So five feet of water around the lake, which can be a decent water depth certain times of the year. So you're going to want to fish these downed trees. And then as we move west, you have rock piles out towards the middle. Now, the middle of the lake here is about 10 feet, roughly. So you guys are going to see that on your depth finders. You're going to see these rock piles here and then also in front of the beach. In addition to that, south here, we have porcupine cribs and these are right offshore. They're gonna be in about five feet of water. So that's gonna be really good habitat for fish to congregate in a safe haven for them as well. We're gonna work further east. Now you got about 20 porcupine cribs in this area 
right here. So you guys find that on your depth finders. That's going to be a good spot for vertical jigging. That's going to be a good spot for crank baiting. It's probably just a little bit too far to cast. However, you can get to there with a boat and you're going to find good structure there in about 10, anywhere from 5 to 10 to 15 feet of water. Opposite side of the lake, you got porcupine cribs here as well. And there's about 15 of them. Now, as we work east here, you're going to see these spider humps. So you're going to have intermingled spider humps with rock piles all up and down here with some down trees right here off the shore. Great, great structure points when you're talking about fishing. Now, south of that, you got 10 more porcupine cribs. And all along this shoreline here, this south shoreline, you're going to have down trees. So look for the tree structure in the water. That's going to hold crappies in the spring. It's going to hold largemouth bass. And it's also going to hold a lot of the panfish, you know, the bluegills and the perches. And catfish are going to be all up and down here. Also, tiger muskies love to use timber as ambush points. Same with porcupine cribs. So you never know if you run a bait through there what you're going to find. So as we work and continue to work west here, porcupine cribs in the middle towards the middle of the lake, you have more rock piles and you have more spider humps. A little bit further towards the dam, you got really good porcupine structure because the water starts getting deeper. So you're going to have about 25 porcupine cribs. Some of them are large, some of them are small right off of shore here. So this is an excellent, excellent spot to do some fishing. This shoreline also has about 15 porcupine cribs here. You got another 10 here and another 20 out here in about 15 feet of water. So wherever I have these dollar signs, that's where those porcupine cribs are roughly going to be sitting. So again, you guys are gonna have to look for them on your depth finder, try to reach some of these ones from shore when you're casting and they will produce fish. Now we're getting into the deeper water. So notice here you got 15 feet and then it's going to go to 25 feet and you got your deepest point right out here near the dam at 28 feet. You got the fishing pier south and you have good riprap structure all along the dam here. So as you guys can see, there's a lot of good riprap that's going to go down into the lake. So that rock structure is also going to hold fish. In addition to this, on this end, you have this outlet. So this outlet is going to run into a stream. There's going to be a grate here. As you guys can see the outlet, the mouth of that outlet is always good to fish. Anytime you have an inlet or an outlet, it's going to be a good area for you guys to do some fishing. In addition to that, I don't have it marked, but this corner where the outlet is, I'll just go ahead and just drop a, uh, an icon here for you guys to see. And we're going to mark this weeds. I'm not really concerned about the color here, so just bear with me. This whole cove in this corner is just really, really good weed structure. Now, anytime you guys find weed structure out on this lake, you're going to want to focus on the edges. So when, when you see the weed structure there and then directly after that into deeper water, that's where you're going to want to focus your attention. So that's where you're going to want to try to cast your baits to. So again, we have the dam here. It's always good to fish the dam. You got 25, 28 feet of water along here. And then you have the mooring area. Now you can't fish along the mooring area, but the boat launch is here. So for those of you that have a boat, you got a parking lot right here and you have the boat launch right there. So all in all, you're going to see anywhere from five, I would say anywhere from one to 10 feet of water when you're fishing from shore. If you guys can get a wallop of a cast, you're going to be in that 10 foot range. Anytime you guys run a bait from 10 to 5 feet and there's a shelf there, you have a potential to pick up fish. I just really want to make sure that you guys understand that regardless of any lake that we break down or any information that you guys get, whether that's research from the internet or my videos or the thousands of videos out there on the internet, you know, it's really important to state that you have to have an understanding of the fish. So when we talk about a lake like Keystone. You have to understand largemouth bass, and you have to understand crappie, and catfish, and tiger muskies. So you really have to have an understanding of the biology of the fish in order to be successful, even with this information. And a lot of times people ask, well, hey, what's your top secret spot? Or I hear guys talking about, you know, just random spots. And there are really awesome spots out there that are going to hold fish year round. 
However, in order for you to be successful on a man-made lake like Keystone, you have to understand the biology of the fish, and you have to understand what the fish likes, where, what it eats, where it lives, you know, what water temperature it's most comfortable in. That is all going to dictate how you approach fishing a lake like this. Now, there's a lot of smaller impoundments in the state of Pennsylvania that are very similar to Keystone, and that rule is going to apply across the board. Make sure you guys are paying attention to the fish, what you're after, what species you're after, so that you can kind of find an area or find key elements that are going to hold those types of fish. Because really what you don't want to do is you don't want to come out here, you know, mid-November, like I did today, and just kind of fish dead water randomly just to get out. So you really want to focus your efforts on where those fish live, what they're eating, what water temperatures they prefer, and all of that information is really going to give you guys the best odds to land a fish from shore or from a boat. You guys can go out here and you can throw some catfish rigs off the bottom and pretty much catch catfish at any point of this lake. However, if you guys know like early spring, musky like to ambush prey from down trees and from timber, you might want to focus on that area. Hit your cribs, check out your humps, and make sure you fish the outlet. Get to your deepest water, maybe troll up and down that, and that's going to produce fish. So, all in all, even though this is a small lake, it really packs a lot of good structure. The Boat and Fish Commission have done a really great job improving fish habitat in this particular lake, and they do a great job overall. So it's important for you guys to check these elements, get out there, do as much fishing as possible, and eventually you guys are gonna get some solid areas to fish. One last thing I wanna mention. I was out there today. Now it's November 14th. It was cold, it was windy. However, I put on Old Faithful, one of my favorite musky baits, and I started launching and casting from this area. I can tell you, I was able to reach this rock pile from shore. And that's a, that's a pretty wallop of a cast. However, when I ran my bait past that rock pile, I did hook and lost the tiger muskie. Now that fish was in the upper 20s. I got a really good look at him. It was a bit of a foul hook after he hit the bait. However, that's just a testament to you guys that if you get out and fish these types of structure, it will produce fish. All right guys, one last thing I wanna talk about in regards to Keystone Lake. Keystone Lake has a lot of good weed vegetation. I didn't show a lot of it on the map because I was really concerned with the key elements and the structure points that I know exist there. Now weeds on the east end of the lake where I showed you where I caught that muskie today or at least hooked that muskie, the weeds were actually pretty high for this time of year. So I think that cove and really the east end of the lake is going to hold really good weed edges and weed structure in general. Now the other thing, the dam didn't have a lot of good weed structure up against the rocks. But that corner that I talked about had really good weed structure. There were weeds sticking out of the water and I did run my baits in and out of there this afternoon. So again, I just wanted to mention that there is a lot of good weed structure throughout the entire lake. And you guys are gonna see that from shore and you're gonna see it from the boat. Cause again, we're talking five to 10 to 15 to 25 feet of water and not a lot of uh, different water depths in between that. So when you're fishing from shore anywhere from 1 to 10 feet, when you're out in a boat, you're going to see 10 to 15 to 25 near the dam and that deepest point of 28 feet down towards the dam in that corner where the mooring area is. So hopefully I gave you guys uh, some good elements. I gave you guys some good information about Keystone. Um, again, this is all public information that's available. Uh, you just got to do enough research to find it. So I've built some of these maps uh, based off of what I know, what I've seen, and then I've kind of supplemented some of the information uh, just directly from the internet. So guys, if you like this video, go and hit that like button for me. If you guys like the content overall, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And make sure you guys ring the bell so you get updated content all winter long. All right, guys, if there's a lake that you guys want to see in particular broken down, feel free to reach out to me and I'll do my best to get you some good information on it. For now, again, we're heading into winter, so it's going to be a really good opportunity to do more and more of these lake breakdowns. 
All right, guys, tight lines. See you next time.